Hi guys, in this today video, we will learn how to get the latest price of Ethereum into our contract. Without further ado, let's get started. So now let's try to come to this page here. And here we can see this is using the data fits. So let's take a look at the example down here. We have the Solidity versions and we also have JavaScript version using the Web3.js or Ether.js and Python down here as well. So now let's try to look uh, at the uh, Solidity. So this is the um, language that we are uh, focusing on now. So here you can see um, the same thing. We have the Pragma Solidity, the versions and also import, right? And we have the contract down here and uh, right here, this is the functions to get the latest price of Ethereum. So now let's try to create something similar to this one here. And uh, now let's just come back. Let's try to create a new function, right? So I'll call this as function, uh, the word, uh, the name of the uh, function called get latest price. So let test price public view we want to return this in uh, instead of u into 56 let's just return this in uh, integer and inside here we can start importing um, the what is it the uh, aggregator v3 interface right the same as seen here so let's just quickly copy this going back and put it on top of the um, here on top of the contract so import um, chain links uh, slash contracts and there are more here right pointing to this file called uh, aggregator v3 interface dot solve so now let's take a look at what inside this uh, file here right so when i search for chain links slash contracts and just put this as github then uh, we can see um, this is the uh, file coming from here or uh, we can also try to look for the uh, npm as well this is the package and here you can see it's quite popular right uh, download weekly this is the number and uh, it really uh, says anything about how to use this right but now let's just go back and go to the uh, github link instead so you click on the first one here and here you can see we are now inside this uh, chain link right so click on the uh, contracts and then going to the uh, source folder and how now you can see we have a list of a uh, version here so the one that we can see here right it's using 0 0.8 right so you just click on this one here and then interfaces and we have a list of file here but the one that we're looking at is the aggregator v3 interface.solve. So this is actually the file, right? The, the code that is uh, used on this one as well. So we will be using uh, whatever the function defined in this page inside our contract, right? So let's take a look here. We have the um, function to get the decimal, description, the versions, uh, get round data, and the latest round uh, data so the one that we want is actually this function right here so how do we call this let test uh, round data function into our uh, contract so now let's take a look down here inside this function so to call it uh, we basically need to write the aggregator because if you want to use it right aggregator v3 and give this a name so let's just say price feed equal to aggregator uh, v3 interface and right here we want to uh, provide the address of uh, whatever the data that we want to uh, get right into this uh, price feed so let's take a look here we have the uh, ethereum data feeds and down here you can see this is uh, using the ethereum mainnet but that is not the one and there's a list of information right and there's a lot more uh, let's just look for the Cohen testnet so we are using this one here so I want to get the price of Ethereum in USD so this is the address let's just quickly copy this address here and you can see there are more down here right and now let's go back here and paste this address into the aggregator v3 interface here 
So now we can start using our price fit variable. So price fit dot let test, right? Let test round data. So this is coming again from this uh, function here. All right. So now we are not ready to use it yet. When you take a look at here, um, we can see that this is a list of variable, right? With different uh, type. Okay. So this is called tuple, or basically it is an object with different types of data. Okay. So now we can also copy the whole thing here, right? So in front of the price fit, let's just paste it here and put the equal sign here. Okay. So now let's just make it look a little bit better right here. And then we can start returning the int answer. Okay. So why are we doing this? This is because we want to convert the int 256 into the integer type because we're returning here. We are returning a list of this, right? A list of variable. So now let's see what happened when I try to compile this. And here we get this warning saying that unused local variable, right? So right now we are only using one variable right here, which is the answer. So how to get rid of this warning? Uh, basically, we can just get rid of this, right? But leave the comma here. So we are not using this, the same for this one, right? And let's just put it on top like this. Same for this. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, let like this. Uh, what this mean? This mean that there's actually a variable in front of it, but we are not using it. We just ignore it, right? The same for this, this, and this one here. So now let's just recompile this again. Command S on my keyboard. And now you can see it's successful, right? Let's try to deploy this and see what happened. So uh, instead of using this uh, JavaScript VM, we will connect it with the injected web3, uh, connected with the uh, MetaMask, okay? So now we are uh, using this one here, the uh, contract slash uh, accept funds. Let's deploy this. It asks whether uh, this is what we uh, want to confirm, right? So, yep, it looks good. Let's try to uh, confirm this. And wait a bit until this contract is deployed. Okay, and now it's successfully deployed. Take a look here. And what happened when I click on get let test price? Okay, so it seemed to be working fine. And what if I instead of putting this as int, I use u in 256? Okay, so right here you can see we defining using int 256, and on top here we returning u in 256. So see if there's an error, right? And right on the fly, when I try to compile this. It says returning the type in 256 is not implicitly convertible to this one, right? And if you want to convert the in 256 to uh, u in 56, what we have to do is to put u in 256 like this, recompile, and yep, that's working, right? So this means that we want to uh, convert from in 256 to u in 256 or let's just uh, instead of in 256 let's just convert it into int right like we previously uh, had okay so now we get this number but what does this number actually means so this means that the price is actually eight uh, decimal points so one two three four five six seven eight right and this is actually the price of one Ethereum equal to the price in uh, USD. So this is the price right now at the time of recording this video, right? So in USD, okay? So um, what are we going to uh, look at next is to uh, try to look at this example here, right? Instead of writing everything inside a function, we can just start uh, refactoring the code uh, that is using the same as this. So let's just copy this here. 
Okay, and then I just put everything here, get rid of this. Alright, so we declaring the aggregator interface uh, internal, meaning that is only inside this uh, contract here called price width. We also create a constructor with the price width here equal to the aggregator v3. And this is the exact address, right? The same address that we already looked into. And now we can start using this price width. So we no longer need this line of code here. Okay, we can start using this price bit directly inside this contract dot uh, latest round data and then returning the answer. Okay, so now let's take a look here. Let's um, try to compile this and then click on the deploy. Okay, let's deploy this again. Asking whether we want to uh, confirm yes and wait for a bit and now the contract is deployed let's click on the get latest price and here we go this is the price of again the one ethereum in usd so it would be so it would be like this right the price of ethereum right now so yep that's basically how we get the latest price of Ethereum into our contract and then we can start using this data here in our next video. Let me know if you have any questions. Until then, see you guys in the next video.